What happens when you give a donation to King James Video Ministries? Uh, recently I had a uh, crazy flat earther come out and attack me in a video. I uh, used to watch the channel or something I guess and and uh, because I don't bow down to the whole flat earth thing that I'm illegitimate and whatever else so he came out with this whole thing and claimed that I do not labor with my hands. I do not uh, know how to work or do anything like that and I should have a regular job so that I can uh, not be chargeable to anyone and uh, you know the fact that this ministry receives donations that proves that I'm fake and I'm corrupt and whatever else so um, let me address some things here okay uh, because I realize that there are new people that come along they don't understand the, the concept of giving to a ministry in the New Testament what all that entails and so I want to cover that very quickly here in this brief video. Um, I'll show you this first of all here real quickly. This is uh, the start of our firewood that we're collecting right there. A lot of different types of wood right here. We're, I felled uh, all these trees yesterday, or uh, not yesterday, two days ago, excuse me. And um, probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe 12, 14 trees, smaller trees. But uh, just going around and cleaning up a lot of the storm damage from the real heavy storm, snowstorm that we got. But um, so uh, it's not that I don't know how to work with my hands. I know how to work very well with my hands. And I'll explain about the firewood thing here in a little bit. But the important thing to get is what does this thing mean in the New Testament of giving? What's the concept of giving to a ministry and working and whatever else? Okay, well, when the Apostle Paul is speaking in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, I can't think of the, chapter 9 I think it is, and 2 Corinthians chapter 9 I think as well, it talks about the thing of giving to a ministry, and what does that mean, what all does that entail? Um, Paul made it very plain that they were laboring so that they would not be chargeable to the Corinthians. And you say, well see, then a man shouldn't get any kind of money from Christians. Men in ministry should just, you know, have jobs and also, you know, do the whole thing of, of uh, preaching. And you should do it for free. Um, well, then you'd have a contradiction because the Apostle Paul over in the book of Philippians talked about how he had received multiple gifts, financial gifts from the Philippians. So you can't just say in, in Corinthians, Paul's saying, I'm not using any of that. I won't use my power over you that I'm, you should be paid, and that means Paul never took money from anybody. That's not true. Um, there are certain people and certain things where you shouldn't take money from them, right? If there's a bunch of carnal people that have some real serious problems, don't take money from them. Um, actually, the whole thing of YouTube here, a lot of people just assume that I make money off of YouTube because YouTube pays people to, to have video content. I have never taken one cent from YouTube. I actually checked into it the one time just to see what all it entailed, what would what all be required of me if I was to take, you know, monetize my videos and things. And they actually uh, said that I would have to put ads on my website. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, it's not just it's it's bad enough that you're getting ad revenue from companies, secular companies that you wouldn't agree with as a Christian. It goes even deeper than that to the thing of now they would actually put ads on my website in order to get the ad revenue thing. Uh, that's not going to be happening anytime soon. So, but there have been Christians, professing Christians that have sent donations to my ministry and I've sent them back because I don't agree with them. And that's all that Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians. And now let me say, so I've said that. Now let me say another point to this. And that other point is that Way back, let's go back to 2005, 2006, somewhere in there. I was starting to get the idea for uh, doing video ministry. And um, I was going to different Baptist churches at the time. And I would teach Sunday school and whatever. And and, um, and I, the idea came into my mind, you know, I really need to document things with video. And so um, I started King James Video Ministries in 2007. 
started to make my first DVD, my first video, and uh, I didn't get onto YouTube until late 2008 and then into 2009, and I wasn't really posting any kind of, you know, videos for Christians or whatever else until 2009 and, and then into 2010 especially, I started putting out more videos for Christians. Um, early on, my, my channel on YouTube was about uh, chainsaws and catching fish. That's why it was originally called Husky 394 XP. It was named after my one professional chainsaw I had at the time from back when I was logging. But um, at the time, I was going to Liberty Baptist Church in 2007, and I remember I actually presented my one video there, and we watched it on a Sunday evening, and everybody was really impressed, and a couple of people bought copies of it and things. It was a DVD, and uh, great, you know, fine, whatever. And that video took me five months to create. It's the Real Bible Version issue exposed. I'd done some other DVD projects before that, but that was kind of the big one. Had bought a lot of animation and royalty-free music, and you know, I put a lot of money into that uh, video. And it took me a long time, five months to do a video. I was just learning about video editing at the time, so I had a lot to learn. And um, But back then, when I was going to Liberty Baptist Church, uh, things weren't going so good there. I was starting to study the whole house church movement thing. What is the church in the New Testament? It started to come to the realization that the church is not a building. Huh, it's the people. And there were no church buildings in the New Testament. And I started to think about that. Ended up leaving Liberty Baptist Church. We started a house church. Bible Believers Fellowship is what we called it. And myself and two other guys that were going to Liberty Baptist, we got into the house church thing. Uh, we were just getting sick and tired of the thing. We, you know, we want to go tracting, and the pet senior pastor at Liberty Baptist would say, oh, uh, well, no, we don't want you to go put out tracks because that, with the church's name on it because we get in trouble or something. And, and uh, well, then we won't put the church's name on it. No, I don't want you doing that either. You know, and we just always having these issues. You know, we want to go street preaching. Well, you know, we, we're not really sure. And, and so we just finally said, in order for us to follow the scriptures and follow what the Lord wants us to do, we need to have a system that's not going to be constantly worried about their public image or something. And we started a house church, like I said, Bible Believers Fellowship. During that time, I was not earning money as the pastor of the house church, right? Um, there would be a few times that they'd say, hey, here's a little bit of money to help you with this or that or whatever. But I was doing tree work. I was doing some other things, selling wood turnings. Um, you know, I had other sources of income. And King James Video Ministries got started. Uh, it was started, but I didn't really have much of an online presence. As I said, I wasn't really on YouTube or anything yet. I just had my DVD. And so people started pushing me, you know, you need to have a website. I don't want a website. That's too much to take care of, you know. And um, I got a website, finally. Uh, one of the couples that went to our house church, uh, the wife helped me build a website through webs. And it was, I had that for many years, just got rid of it, what, last year or something, I think. And I have the new website now. But um, at that time, there was a brother in Australia that had bought copies of my DVD and he asked my permission, can I make copies and, and give this out? Yeah, that's not a problem. And he said to me, he said, brother, he said, I'd like you to get a PayPal account or something like that whereby I can donate to you. And I remember at the time, and God knows I'm telling the truth, I said, no, I said, I don't take donations. I don't, I'm not into that. I just do this stuff and, you know, people can buy my DVDs and whatever else. I don't take donations. And he said to me, this an older man, and he said to me, he said, brother, if you're not taking donations, then you are keeping us from earning rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. I want to be a fellow partaker of the... Um, of the blessings and, and of the people that get saved and turn to the King James Bible from your ministry. And he said, if you say I can't donate, then I have no way to really be a partaker other than just praying. And he said, that goes against the New Testament, brother. You know, you're going to warfare against these new version people and against a lot of other false uh, movements. Let me fund that warfare. And he gave me the scriptures and everything that go along with it. Again, 
I have a whole sermon on it. Does King James Video Ministries require a 10% tithe? Most churches will try to get the 10% tithe, 10% of your income. That's what they will tell you. You owe them 10%, which is not scriptural. <laughs> and I've talked about that. I've debunked that. I don't, you know, a lot of these guys that go to seminary, they know the truth. They know what's going on about the whole thing of tithing is not scriptural. And yet they keep their mouth shut about it because they know it would hurt the income and then they can't pay their bills and they, the whole other, other thing there. I'm not doing that. Okay, um, so uh, long story short, I got the PayPal link back then. I forget what year that would have been, probably 2009 or so, maybe somewhere in there, when I had the website, and um, <clears throat> 2009, maybe a little bit before then, I don't remember. been so many years ago, and a lot has happened, so I, I tend to forget some of that stuff. Um, <clears throat> so... But I have received donations. And you say, what's this have to do with the pile of firewood, brother? You still didn't get back to it. I'm trying to get there. Just be patient. Um, so what I realized was, okay, I can sell DVDs. I can make DVDs. Um, that's fine. I'm laboring. I'm putting my time and effort into it. I'm buying royalty-free music. I'm putting, I'm buying animation software. I'm uh, you know, putting things into this to make it really worthwhile for people. But if I want to really reach out to more people, I can do this online video thing with YouTube and then just completely forget the thing of selling videos and just put it out there for free. Okay, well, you know, I'll see how this goes. And that's what I've been doing ever since way back then. Um... You know, for what would that be? 15 years or something? 14, 15 years, something like that. I've been putting out videos on YouTube. You say, well, you have to have a secondary job. Well, again, see, here's the, here's the issue. I agree that a man that has a local fellowship, house church type of a thing, um, it's a good idea for him to have a job outside of that. Very smart. Um, because it's... You're just talking to people in the area there and you're not really having to do things that will reach out to the whole world. Um, King James Video Ministries being online, I have to reach out to a lot more people. And so for me to have to have a, another job right now and do the video ministry and be a husband and a father and take care of this property and everything else, it isn't going to happen. It's just not possible. Um, and in terms of the firewood pile, we'll get to that right now. What's that about? Well, the firewood pile is a form of laboring with my hands. Say, how so? Well, you're, I cut and I split uh, the firewood. And so I'm doing that. But the reason I do firewood is because, number one, it keeps me in good shape. But number two, it's a cheap, low-cost way to heat. Right out here in northern Maine where I live, um, you know, firewood is just a way of life for most people. And I was born and raised doing firewood. And, you know, as a little boy, we were, I would be doing firewood with my father and, and things. Right now, Oliver and I, we're going to be doing firewood today. That's why we're here. It's early in the morning. We're done with breakfast and everything. Came back here, we're doing firewood, just like I was raised. And um, <clears throat> I could. Again, see, I have power. I could come along and I could say, you know what? I need to be fully dedicated to the ministry. I'm just going to have to pay for, you know, home heating oil or electricity or whatever else. Um, and that's all I'm going to use. And I won't even waste my time doing firewood anymore. Yeah, then, then there's more of a need for money to come in. See, um, I could have gone and I could have gotten a mortgage, which I'm radically opposed to, but I could have gotten a mortgage because I don't have time to do the whole off-grid thing and all the other stuff. But I didn't. You know, we bought this land, it's bare land. And I'm, I've had to build some things on it. You know, I'm not, still not sure if we're gonna to try to have somebody build a place on this property for us. That's still something we're praying about. We're actually gonna start checking into different builders uh, because house prices are not coming down. And there's a whole big scam with that, which we're investigating right now as well. Um, <clears throat> so, 
Um, that should kind of explain it. There are, there are things that you can do, work that you can do, like firewood, uh, like, you know, uh, we have an apple tree right over here and multiple apple trees on the property. We have raspberries on the property. We have uh, mushrooms, wild mushrooms on this property. We have a lot of things that we can hunt and we can do fishing and foraging in the area and that helps us to save money. So it's a different type of laboring. You know, you think, oh, it has to be a nine to five job. No, not necessarily. It's ways that you can save money to lessen the burden upon the body of Christ. Uh, I don't drive, I could, I have power to go out and say, hey, you know what? You people out there that are feeding, that are, that are being fed by this ministry, you have the responsibility to pay enough into me that I can go get a nice new truck or something. It's not happening. <laughs> because I'm not spending, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 on a pickup truck or something. That's ridiculous. I drive a couple of older junkers and, and whatever else. Uh, and I say a couple because uh, I have different vehicles for different purposes and they're low cost vehicles. All my vehicles combined don't equal the price of one new truck. So I have to figure out all this financial stuff and all these other things so that I can become fruitful in the ministry. And if there's something that's making me unfruitful in the ministry, then I need to scrap that and get that out of here. So, but the way that it works in the New Testament is um, Satan perverts things from the New Testament. Remember that. It'll make sense here in a minute. When you see a ministry that's a good ministry and you're learning from that man and he really preaches the word good, he doesn't question the word of God, the King James Bible, he defends the word of God. He answers your questions and things. When you are fed spiritually, then you have a responsibility to say, I'm going to support that man. And here's where the devil kind of comes in and he counterfeits this. Um, in the secular world, the finance world, you have investing in the stock market. And so you come along and you say, um, I see uh, Lockheed Martin. Okay, uh, there's the war in Ukraine, the war over there in Israel, uh, which is probably going to expand with Israel and Iran. Uh, they love war. There, there's a lot of money to be made in war. Uh, we might have China and Taiwan. There's, you know, a bunch of things. So Lockheed Martin, a defense contractor, looking pretty good for their stock for the future. So you say, I'd like to buy into that company because I want to receive some dividends. See, um, that is a satanic corruption of what God's system is. God's system is, I'm not going to put my money into some preacher that just stands up there and reads his sermons out of a book or something and just gives me five minutes of you know, feel good stuff and I'm not learning anything and all he wants to do is just try to pay his own salary and then pay for the church mortgage or whatever. Um, I'm not gonna get good dividends spiritually back from that ministry. Hmm. I want to find a ministry that is producing really good spiritual fruit, that answers questions, that I see lives being changed from this ministry, and I want to invest in that. And you watch and you say, that video, that sermon was a real blessing to me, and God lays on my heart. It doesn't have to be 10% of your income. Again, that's a corruption. It talks about the, a tenth of the spoils and things back in the Old Testament. It had nothing to do with money. Okay, money's there, but if the tenth of the spoils, it's not just money, it's also, you know, livestock and, and things, slaves and whatever else, you know, back in the Old Testament times. Um, so, but see, these church buildings, they have to find a way to extort money from people. That's why they came up with a 10% tithe thing, which I've spoken against. I've preached against it. Show me any other preacher that does that. There's some, but there's not many because they can't, they don't want to get in there and affect their income. So when you find a good ministry, you're being fed spiritually. You say, you know what? I see that this ministry is going places. This ministry is doing things and he's preaching things that most people are not preaching. Um, I want to have a, a stock. I want to invest in that ministry. I'm going to give to that ministry. A little bit too swampy this way. Can't go down that trail right now. Uh, still have the 
spring snow melt here. But that's how the thing works, okay? Um, it's not about me trying to get rich and I'm too lazy to have a regular job or whatever else. You know, and, and oh, and the, the thing, I'll say this too, this thing of, well, Brian, you have to work with your own hands. You're you need to labor with your own hands so that you can give to those that have need. Um, <clears throat> last time I checked, I think me carrying around a camera, then going to an office, sitting at my computer, laboring with my hand, you know, typing out things and, you know, whatever, and uh, you know, with using the mouse, I was saying, and editing and, you know, rendering the thing and uploading it and everything, typing the description in and all the other stuff. I think that's laboring with my hands. And of course, some picky person will say, oh, it's not laboring. You know, oh, okay, so if I had an office job, that wouldn't be a job? <sighs> people, you just have to get to the point where you realize there are people that hate preachers. I preach against certain sins or I don't preach for certain things or whatever else. And oh, now I'm not legitimate and they'll find something to pick on me for and, and they love to do the whole thing of you know, Brian doesn't know how to work and whatever else. And you'll see these videos, they're all over the place out there. People hate me. Okay, whatever. But um, honestly, I will tell you my heart. I will speak to you my heart on this and I will tell you uh, there is no amount of money in the world that would make me quit preaching what I preach. None. Somebody comes along and they say, brother, I'm gonna give you a million dollars. I would take the money and I'd say, thank you very much for that. Wow, I can really get some things done. I could actually hire some people. What a thought that would be. And uh, hire some people to help me with the video ministry. Uh, some younger guys or whatever else that'd be really good with camera stuff, much better than me and better with video editing and whatever. Uh, yeah, I could do things like that. Um, but I wouldn't, uh, all of a sudden, where'd Brian go? Oh, you know, well, he's, he's living in the Bahamas now or something on some tropical mansion or something. <laughs> Not like I, I could even, you know, I can't even afford anything if, for a million dollars anymore. A million dollars used to be something. Now, well, you know, a lot of houses are a million dollars, which is ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm not going to leave the ministry. I love the ministry. Um, I've been tempted to leave different times. <laughs> but, you know, the Lord called me into this. And that's what I'm going to do with my time. So what happens when you donate to King James Video Ministries? Well, your money goes to a man and a family. Myself, my wife, and my son, and our dog. Um, none of us are just crazy with money. Um, we spend a lot of money on books, materials and things like that so we can learn and get doc learn more about certain subjects, get the documentation to be able to prove what we're trying to say. Um, that's what we do with the money. Um, I, this camera right here that I'm talking into right now was a $500 camera. Why? Why would I get this? Don't you have other cameras to use? Can't you get a cheaper camera from Walmart or something? Uh, sure, but uh, then the quality's not there. And my other camera that I had, I struggled for a long time with that, over a year with it, trying to keep the lens clean. And uh, didn't didn't work too good. And so, uh, you know, I put money back into the ministry. We eat very frugal meals. I said back many years ago when we came to Maine, before Oliver was born, we pretty much lived on fried potatoes and onions. We could get these penny-wise bags of potatoes. Back then it was $3 for, for uh, 50 pounds of potatoes. And uh, they were penny-wise because they, were, they had cuts in them and whatever else, they were kind of mangled up a little bit. Still plenty of good potato on them, but uh, we, we bought uh, that stuff, that's what we ate. Two meals a day. Uh, fried potatoes and onions. Two meals a day, <laughs> every day. We did buy ketchup and occasionally bacon to go along with it, you know, and we fried it, the potatoes and onions in the bacon grease. And um, you say, well, boy, that must have been rough, you know, and you probably eat a lot better now. Oh, well, actually, we still eat a lot of potatoes, meat and potatoes. Um, we do not go out to eat ever um, because we can't trust other people with our health. 
We've gone to restaurants before. Early on in our marriage, my wife and I went to restaurants and we'd get sick and things and we both came into the agreement, no more restaurants. So my son Oliver has never been in a restaurant unless it's just to go in and go to the bathroom. Never eaten restaurant food. That's why he's healthy. Um, vacations, uh, we go on maybe a day vacation or something sometimes, but that's it. And um, we work almost every day. Uh, days like this, you know, we take some days off, have to come do firewood, which is the reason why I like to do firewood. It's a nice little break from things. Um, but you know, we have no mortgage, we have no debt. We have, we live very frugally. This property was $55,000. Our office in town was $30,000. So total $85,000. Find me a ministry that has that kind of a, a cost of where their property is or whatever else. A lot of these guys out there, they're running multi-million dollar ind industries. <laughs> yeah, ministries. <laughs> so, um, and, I, and again, I'm not saying, brethren, that I'm the only guy you should ever donate to or whatever else. Uh, there's other good guys out there. There's other ministries out there. Find some guy that uh, preaches out of the King James Bible, believes the book, doesn't put doubt into your heart about the King James Bible. Support them. If you feel the Holy Spirit... Uh, saying, wow, that was really good and really answered my question and boy, what a blessing. Support the guy. You will earn rewards in heaven for that. Don't go to heaven with a huge bank account down here on the earth. When the Lord says, come up hither, he's not saying, come up hither, you and your money. It's just for you to go up. You know, the old hymn, I guess it's not so old, I think it was 20th century was when it was written, the, until then. Um, and I think the second stanza might be the second stanza, but it says, The things of earth will dim and lose their value If we recall, they're just borrowed for a while. And it goes on. Yeah. What you have down here, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This isn't my property. This property belongs to God. I am the steward of this property. God gave me the money through the work that I have done and the body of Christ supporting this ministry to give me a place where I can be out here and walk around like this. And I can share this beautiful property, God's creation, with you, my viewers. That's how it works. I can stay out here and, and you know, different times when I was living around other people and things up at Bridgewater, uh, we had issues with neighbors and things. Church building next door and they had a rock concert and things outside and was out there rebuking them and everything. You know, if I live really close to other people, they will take that opportunity to mess with the ministry. Um, <clears throat> I mean, even at the office in town, right on Main Street in Patton, there are times when I hear vehicles and they're going by and right when they get in front of our place, they hit the gas really hard, and rrrr, you know, like that. <sighs> so, well, you should just not be out there in the middle of nowhere and whatever. Well, then I'd have people messing with us. Here, we have enough land that we have a good barrier around us. So hopefully that explains everything. Um, you know, I really am thankful for the people that donate to this ministry. And uh, again, you know, I mean, I've said this before, but uh, even if every one of my subscribers gave a dollar, one dollar, fifty-two thousand dollars, just one dollar a month, that'd be fifty-two thousand a month. See, it wouldn't take a whole lot corporately for a whole bunch of people to say, okay, I'll just give a small amount. Um, I've had you know, young teenagers, children, whatever. Um, no, I'm not saying teenagers or children, but I'm saying young children up to teenagers. And they'll send me a, a little envelope with a dollar bill and a few coins. That's very precious to me. You know, I don't, I don't look at that, take it out of the thing and just go, you know, oh, this is pathetic. I look at that and you know what? In many ways, that puts a greater burden in my heart to do my best than a check for however much. You know, I take that very seriously. A child come along and saying, um, hey, Brother Brian, this is for you. God blessed me for, through your ministry and I want to give this little bit of money that I have. That's uh, kind of like the widow's mite, you know, puts me in mind of that. That's such a blessing to me that I've, and, and again, it, it helps me to understand I'm blessing people. Um, 
people have learned from me. They want to support me. They want to see me continue. And that's where your donations go. And so uh, to the flat earth guy or whatever out there that got all offended and things and he's trying to make me into a, a fake and a fraud and whatever else. Sorry about that. Um, I feel bad for these people that are like that. You know, you get to heaven and the Lord says, uh, so what'd you do with that money down there that I gave you? Well, I spent it on myself and I was saving up for retirement and all this other stuff. I'm not saying you shouldn't save for retirement, don't get me wrong, but hopefully you know what I'm saying here. Well, could have done some things to help out my calls down there, but uh, now that you're here for eternity, um, here's, a, here's a gold coin and a, two silver coins and he didn't really earn any precious stones, so. Oh well, but hey, at least the Antichrist got your money down there. At least you left a nice, uh, good 401k or whatever else. Good uh, retirement down there. Pretty sad. Or you could have it get up there and the Lord will say, hey, you had a lot of people saved. Got a lot of people saved down there and you turned a lot of people towards the King James Bible. You say, I don't remember some of these people. And the Lord will say, uh, yeah, but it's because you helped donate to King James Video Ministries. And through that, you're a partaker of the fruit that came from that ministry. Ah, oh, well, I'm glad I did that. So, hopefully that clears up some things. Some things. And uh, just thank you to everybody out there that does support the ministry. And you say, oh, Brother Brian, I really wish I could give, but I just don't. I don't have the money. I don't have any money right now. Well, that's why I offer my videos freely. Okay, I labor with my hands to offer things freely to people that can't afford it. And if you are one of those that can't afford it, then please give me your time in prayer. Um, we have been under some very savage uh, spiritual attacks here over the, this year, basically. Um, some really wild stuff, worse than anything I've ever experienced before in the ministry. Uh, it's getting bad. And I really need your prayers. Um, people threatening us and, and things and, and uh, some spiritual attacks that have been very ferocious. And I do mean very ferocious. And uh, we've gotten through them so far. But uh, I just feel kind of like the, the devil and his people are kind of homing in on me and kind of trying to get their hand around my neck and kill me sometimes. And um, I'll keep fighting. I won't quit. Uh, as God gives me his strength. I don't do it in my own power, believe me. But uh, I would really appreciate your prayers out there. Pray for all of us. Um, it isn't just a thing of, you know, oh, well, Brother Brian, he's fine, he's strong, he won't quit. Um, I get very weak sometimes, brethren. And uh, I do need your prayers. So... Um, please do donate to the ministry if you've been feel led to um, and and I just want to say this too one other thing I'll say this before I close I know I'm kind of ranting here a little bit with this video but another thing that I need to say very important here and that is I made the statement way back when when I was kicking the flat earth thing the one time and I said if you're a flat earther watching this ministry stop watching you can stop donation I, I don't want your donations I don't want your money and whatever else and I've noticed that a lot of the flat earthers that used to donate to the ministry have stopped donating but they still watch and I think okay well um, you're getting yourself into a position where God will punish you for that uh, if you're watching and being blessed by some of the sermons but you're not donating because I don't believe the earth is flat um, that's a problem, okay? That's a problem you need to get sorted out between you and God. All right? Um, if you're going to watch the ministry, then if the Lord blesses you, if you're fed through the ministry, then I am a shepherd. I take care of the flock. You feel fed. You feel safe. Then I get to partake of the fruit of that, you know, being fed there. Again, I've done sermons on it. I'm not going to get into all the scriptures right now. That's the way it works. If you call me a heretic because I believe the earth is a globe or a ball or whatever, I don't really care, but you know, if you call me a heretic, then stop watching, okay? Don't donate, don't watch. 
If you're going to continue to watch, then get over your little pet peeve there, your little thing about the flat earth and whatever, and say, hey, Brother Brian, I don't agree with him on the shape of the earth, but he sure is good here, here, and here. I've been blessed greatly. There you go. That's how it works. Uh, you're not going to get in trouble with me. I don't really care one way or the other, but God will uh, he'll, he'll have something to say to you someday if that's what you're doing. So that is going to be it. And uh, see you in upcoming videos.